Log Talk Radio. Welcome to Awake to Oneness Radio. I am your host, Caroline Chang, and the mission of Awake to Oneness Radio is to inspire the world to awaken to oneness. Science and spirituality has been telling us that we are literally connected. We are literally all one. So what you do to another person, you literally do to yourself. So once the world awakens to this truth, Um, There will be peace on earth. So that is actually the mission of this radio show. Um, Today's topic is going to be Cross the Bridge from Fear to Fearlessness with our guest, Certified Psychic Corby Mitlin. I met Corby actually about two years ago at an expo, but I didn't realize I had met her two years ago because I contacted her while my son was in the hospital this past summer. Um, She was one of the um, mediums and psychics that helped Robert Schwartz with his books that that was so inspirational to me during the time my son was in the hospital. Um, Actually, today is very bittersweet because today, a year ago, April 3rd, was the day my son went into the hospital. And I say bittersweet because a very dear friend of my son's, Amanda, just had a baby boy today, and his name is Charles Kyle Wagner. She actually named her son after my son. My son's name is Kyle, and she gave her son Kyle as his middle name, and they were very, very close friends. Um, So today is a very bittersweet day because it is the anniversary of my son going into the hospital, but it's also the birth of Charles Kyle Wagner, welcome to the world. Um, also, I want to uh, say happy Good Friday to everybody. Hope everybody's enjoying the start of their Easter weekend. Um, and let's um, go right into, let me bring Corby on the line. Okay. Corby, okay. Technical. Ah, take, uh, here we go. Hi, Corby. Hi, Caroline. It's great to be here. Great. Wonderful to have you. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for for being on the show for me, with me. Um, I just I really was inspired by our meeting. You called me last year, last, I think it was June. Yeah, it was June, while my son was on life support, and you were just a rock <laughs> for me when I really needed uh, a support. So I'm so glad to have you on the show today. Um, I love the topic, um, crossing the bridge from fear to fearlessness. Um, When I think of that, I think of the fact that, um, for me, fear is it, it comes from not knowing who we really are. Once you understand who you really are, I think it kind of eliminates the whole idea of being afraid or being fear- fearful. So, um, way to think about it. Not everybody is there, though. Um, okay. One of the things that I realize, I'll give the what I call the thirty-second spiel to people so they know who I am. Um, as you said. I am a certified psychic, a certified professional tower reader, a medium, a channel, and I was delighted to be uh, one of Robert Schwartz's uh, channels and mediums for his book series. Stacey Wells and I are the only two that he used in both. But my own journey is what taught me about crossing the bridge from fear to fearlessness. There's an old saying, we teach what we most need to learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, my background is such that I've done the cancer dance three times. I have been divorced twice. My life has been very roller coaster, no breaks. And it wasn't until I started living the examined life that I was able to cross that bridge from fear to fearlessness. And when I talk about that, 
everybody has a place that they're scared. We're human, and we don't have all the answers. So most of the time, we are trained, by the way the world works, to be afraid of the future, to think worst case, so we will be prepared. Well, the anyone who knows law of attraction is the universe is a short order cook with no imagination. You keep thinking about the worst stuff, it will probably show up. So I taught myself, with the help of the Option Institute in Massachusetts, to always drill down to what am I unhappy about or fearful? What do I think, why am I unhappy or fearful about that? What do I think would happen if I stopped being afraid or fearful and just moved forward? Those mm-hmm. are very simple questions, but they're so profound. Um, an example of how this works, in 2002, I finally got it right. I married my hero, the guy that I'm still madly in love with. It was a great marriage for about a year and a half. We were in our late 40s, early 50s, no kids, baby. It was fabulous. And then in 2004, uh, there were microcalcifications on my mammogram. Since I had had cancer twice before, we got it checked out. And the folks at Mass General said, okay, you got cancer on both sides. In three weeks, we are taking both breasts. Oh, and we're also taking the ovaries. And you're going to go from this Dolly Parton figure with this libido of a 17-year-old boy to a fat old woman with massive side effects and no libido in four months, and there's nothing you can do about it. Suck it up. See you in three weeks. Did I cry? Hell yeah. But after 24 hours, I knew, all right, this you cannot change. It is happening. You had better get okay with it. So I started finding, and I didn't care how weird they were, the most Positive things I could think of, for instance, well, you don't have them, you can't get cancer there. That's a good thing. You're not going to get slammed in the refrigerator door at the doctor's every year, and every woman out there knows exactly what I'm talking about with that one. Okay, so I'll have implants. I'll be perky till I'm 93. This is cool. To the point where, when I was in the operating room ready to go under, I looked at my two surgeons, and I said to one, you have three hours for the demolition work. And I looked at my plastic surgeon and said, you got three hours for the front end alignment. I want to be out of here in six. Boom. Really good anesthesia drugs. I was out of Mass General in three days, shopped for a bathing suit in five. I'm 11 years clear. Now, have the side effects Wonderful. been fun? No. But you deal with what you deal with. You see everything that you do have. And you realize it's all choice. It is all choice. And that is why cross the bridge from fear to fearlessness and fly, has become what I call my sentence of passion. Everyone has one, and your sentence of passion is not who you are or what you do or even how you do it. It is your vapor trail. It's your rallying cry. When you go skidding into heaven on bald tires and fumes in the tank and God hands you a beer and says, so tell me, you get to say, it was so cool, let me show you, and you roll it out. So for me, helping somebody go from point A to point B, when they thought they couldn't get there, whacking them on the shoulder and saying, here are your wings, you don't need a flight plan, now take off, I'm doing my bliss. Hmm. And it teaches me about fearlessness every time I remember the sentence of passion and I work with a client like that. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I, 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 I'm I, resonating <laughs> with everything you're saying because for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm there. I'm fearless. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. just going for it, following whatever spirit tells me to do. I'm just doing it. And no expectation and no fear. I'm just living in each moment and seeing the beauty in each moment. So I, I really am resonating with what you're saying. Wonderful. That is, that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, we do have some callers already. <laughs> uh, I am we so have, popular here. Sure, go yeah, ahead. Wo- wonderful, wonderful. We have uh, Kimberly. I am going to bring Kimberly. Uh, Kimberly. Uh, let me say that name. Okay. Hi, Kimberly. You are Hi. live. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful, and you, honey? 
Great, great. Great, great, great. Hey, Kimberly, Did you how have, are you? What can I do for you? Good. How are you? Did you have a question, Kimberly, for Corby on myself? Yes, I, I have a question uh, for you both. I've been in a um, a stagnating career of teaching, and I would like to transition out. And I just want, um, if if you could, some some answers from from my soul. Okay. Now, when you say answers from my soul mm-hmm. about how to transition out, uh, we could do that. But that would be a lot of dead air right now because it takes me time to get in. Now I can tell you what I'm getting downloaded from Spirit. And the way Spirit tells me to do it is find what you love about teaching because you're not totally burned out completely. You were too good a teacher. And there's always that core that says, this is what I'm meant to do, but, man, it is being made difficult. So find another way to teach, whether it is, training for computers, whether it is um, working on a crisis line, even whether it's being right hand to a powerful CEO, your soul is that of a teacher. And there will always be a way to move people forward. You may not be teaching calculus or geography or French. You may be teaching them how to move forward in their lives, how to live the examined life, how to get from their own personal fear to fearlessness. But you will always, always teach. Never leave that behind. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it makes sense. Good. Um, very good. Well, Kimberly, my thoughts are um, very along the same lines with Corby is saying, um, I actually, I'm a teacher as well, and it was not a plan. It's something that just happened. I teach piano, and I love it. And it was nothing, it was never planned. But I also know that whatever I'm doing, I have to, you can always focus on the negative of, you know, or whatever situation you're in. I always say to myself, I created this situation. I created this job that I'm in right now. Whether I'm loving it or hating it, I created it. So what I need to do in this moment is examine the positive in, in this moment, the, what are the things you like about the job right now? You know, and focus on that and then just take it one moment at a time and grow from there. Because I feel when we focus on the positive, our, our life is going to shift and it's going to go in that positive direction. Just like whatever is it that you don't like about the job, don't focus on that. It's your focus to what you do like. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but that kind of works for me. Yes, it makes Kimberly. sense. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. So um, did you have another question? Does that seem to help? That helps. Thank you. That helps. Okay. You're, You're very welcome. Thank you well, for calling. Thank you for calling. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. Bye-bye, Kimberly. Bye. Okay. Okay. Um, we have another caller. We have Debbie. Um, okay. Hello? Debbie? Hi, Debbie. Hi. You are live. Hi, oh, Debbie. Wonderful. Hi. Hi. Um, hi. I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this question. A lot of series of events have unfolded um, from my dad passing away to finding out that I have a cousin in foster care to going about getting her out of foster care. During that time, I had to have back surgery, and so I'm not even working. And so we're going once a week to see her. Um, Eventually, I'm going to be where I can go back to work. Uh, Not the same job. My question is how everything is going to work out as far as being able to work and making her feel she's wanted and loved. She's 16 years old. Okay. Uh, First thing I heard, you were like a sentence and a half through this, and immediately Spirit said, one door closes, someone comes through the window. Yes, you lost your dad, but um, the foster child is in to, I'm hearing, reinforce a sense of family, and family is almost not blood. There's family of blood and family of choice 
And even if she's a cousin, it's family of choice that you're being asked to do here. We can choose any place in our lives, any, any time. Uh, we may not be able to change the circumstance, but we can choose how we react. So you're being gifted with this cousin, this 16-year-old cousin. Um, I have to tell you also I'm getting a past life resonance. Caroline, do you mind if I go into that for a sec? Of course. Go go for okay. it. <laughs> um, Deb, I did um, a great deal of the past life work for Robert Schwartz in his books because I can download pretty fast. And what I'm getting for you is this was this is a repeat circumstance. Um, I'm seeing the two of you in Cornwall, England. This is about 1850 or 52. Her parents died of consumption. Uh, that that's what we call tuberculosis. Uh, she was very frail. She had had to take care of them right until the end. She had very little education, and she was pretty broken. You and your husband, um, he was a minister. You were the preacher's wife. You did not make a lot of money, um, and you had three kids of your own. But your husband just looked at you and said, would the Lord have tossed away a lamb, saying that the flock was full? So you took her in. It was not a successful thing because your husband in those days didn't realize how tough it was on women to take in yet another mouth to feed. And so she ended up being the scullery maid, the one who cleaned. It was as if you took her in and instead she became your maid of all work. This time she needs to be to come in and be cherished. It doesn't mean they'll give her chores, but... It does mean that you have the opportunity to cherish this soul that thinks it is here only for what good it can do, not that it is loved regardless. As far as getting different work, you'll be able to manage that. Um, I, I normally would, would go right in through career for you, um, you know, one of the things you'll learn about intuitives, if we've had jobs in the world and we can grab from that left side of our brain, we do it. I used to be an executive recruiter. I've canceled people in jobs for years. But what I'm seeing that is most important is you and this cousin agreed in your pre-birth planning session for a redo, a do-over, as they say. And this time, no matter how difficult your your job, your task, your agreed upon to gift to her is to teach her that she is worth something. She can be loved. She is worthy of being loved, but the love has to start with her. If she doesn't love herself, she's not going to believe that anyone else loves her at all. And that is a wounding from several incarnations. They got your work cut out for you, my dear. Yes. I, I understand, yeah. She's, before we've tried to get her, she's had several suicide attempts, so... Um, we we tell her she's special and we love her and you know hopefully Frank my husband and I said when he heard about it he says we've got to go get her no if ands or doubts about it as soon as he heard he says we're going to get her I'm like okay <laughs> I had my fears they've kind of like they're like almost non-existent now as far as her doing anything okay that's somebody's phone um. One of the things that I'm going to suggest that will help you with her um, is what I call being the happy Martian detective. And that is when she says something, don't try to figure it out, don't try to tell her what she should think. Because too often people who are tempted to take themselves out are because they don't get listened to. And they figure what they say nobody will, will accept. Now let me give you an example of the Martian detective, the way to do it. If you had water coming out of your eyes, I might look at you and say, why are you crying? And you know what? I could be wrong. A Martian who has no point of reference would simply look at you and go, why is there water coming from your eyes? And you know what? The Martian would be right because maybe your contact lenses are bothering you or maybe you have allergies or maybe there's an emotional basis. So if you come upon, what, what is your your uh, cousin's name? Her name is Haley. If you come across Haley and she's upset, 
Don't tell her, don't be upset, honey. Just say, Haley, what has you upset? And let her talk. And don't don't negate what she says. If she says, um, I'm afraid you're going to get rid of me, don't say, no, we won't. You quietly say, why are you afraid we're going to get rid of you? Because when you do that, you're uncovering her deeper pain and you're helping her change it. What do you think would happen if you stopped being afraid of that, Haley? Instead of telling her how she feels, which is how the world has dealt with things. This is going to be one of the biggest things for strengthening her self-regard. It will clear you with what what's going on with her. And whenever she says, I don't know, the, the best way to get to it is just look at her and say quietly, if you had to guess. Because very often when people say, I don't know, they're afraid to be wrong. But if you tell them they can only guess, you're probably going to get the serious stuff first time out. Do you see how that works? Yes. Yeah. You can, uh, the the excitement I'm feeling like waves crashing is you can make a miracle with this child. It's all set up, all God is saying, push the button that says yes, honey, and I got the rest. So um, this is going to be an amazing journey for all of you, and you are going to gift this child with her life. Trust me on that one. I got chills. I have chills. That's- that's called that's a true beautiful. dream, baby. That means that upstairs yeah. is going, uh-huh, write this down. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Also, also, Debbie, I wanted to ask you, um, because our, our, my first three episodes were was dealing with suicide, and you said that she um, has um, tried to take her life in the past. I, I, I have that experience myself when my son was um, very ill, and it was, I was told he wasn't going to live. This is three years ago, and so I, that's why I dealt with suicide as the first topic. So it'd be great if you maybe took a listen, if you could, to those three shows that dealt with suicide. Um, one of the last uh, week's guests, and uh, per, per ear, I'm always, I always have trouble with her last name, but she wrote a beautiful book called Stephen Liz her 15-year-old son committed suicide. That would be a wonderful book for you to read that might, you know, help you. And hello, that might be a good book for you to read. Okay, Debbie. Okay. Debbie. Um, yes, uh, Stephen Lives uh, is a beautiful book um, that, and it explains what, what he was going through at 15, which made him, you know, uh, take his life. But I just, suggest that you might check out those three shows that deals a lot with suicide and how um, people feel it's an escape, especially young people that are taking their lives. They feel it's an escape, which it really isn't. We we all know that. So um, it may be helpful. Okay. okay. Corby, I didn't mean to cut you off, Corby. Are you still there? I'm here, Corby? baby, and I'm just going to okay. say amen to everything you said. Okay. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, Debbie, does I uh, hopefully yes. hopefully this helps? This. Um, uh, we we are not going to let this child down. We are not. Great. Awesome. You you are a blessing to her, and she is a blessing to you. You know, you're both a blessing to each other, and that's beautiful that you have each other. And I'm, you know, I just I feel in my heart. Um, I'm not an intuitive, <laughs> but I feel in my heart that this is exact. She's exactly where she needs to be to grow, and you you both will grow each other in ways you you never even imagined. That's that's coming from my heart. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Debbie, for calling. Okay, oh, thank you so much. Yes. Oh, thank thank you, thank you so much. Okay. We do have another caller. I don't have the name, but I am going to bring this caller on. Hi. Hello. Caller from... Hi. hi. My name is okay. Sharon. How are you this evening? Oh, good. Hey, your name again? Sharon. I'm sorry. didn't hear your name. Sharon? Oh, it's, yeah, it's Sharon. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Yes. Okay. I can hear you now. <laughs> okay. Aww. Hi. Okay. Hello. Hi. Your your story touched me. Oh my goodness. Just thought I'd let you know that. 
I'm Thank sorry, you. which story, though? Corey. Okay. Sorry. Just, yeah, just the whole thing. It's, it's very true. It's a very, it's a very touching story. I just thought, just thought I'd let you know that. Okay. Oh, Thank you. Wonderful. Um, ooh. If I can teach with it, then that's just one more reason it happened. That's how wow. I see it. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. That's, well, my that's question beautiful. Is, I know it, it really was. Um, I was wondering what you see for me um, with employment. I'm, I've been contracting for like I'm on my eighth month, and I just got another one. It lasts two months. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering if I'm going to be able to, to extend this, try and keep it as long as I can until I find my right job. Does that gotcha. make sense? Do me a favor. Tell me a um, couple of things. First of all, what do you do? What are you contracting in? What field? Um, well, I'll take anything with my administrative skills. This one isn't even in my background, but it was good money. I, okay. I mean, I do investments, financial. I do administrative work. Got it. Insurance, right. da, 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 yeah. Yep. The other thing I I'm want using those is I just need your birthday, month and day, because I want to see what yep. the year energy is for you. September 1st. Okay. Here's how it works. Our lives go in nine-year cycles. The way I get yours is I take your month and day, so nine plus one is ten. Now, this year mm. is an okay. eight year. Two plus zero plus one plus five is eight. Ten plus eight is 18. One plus eight is nine. You know, you have to be good at arithmetic, but not much else. So if this is a nine-year, and our lives go in nine-year cycles, kiddo, this year is system dump. This year is the year you need to hold the celestial garage sale, getting rid of everything in your life that's busted that you'll never fix, that you've outgrown, and was never you in the first place. I see you contracting for the rest of this year, but any job that you get isn't going to last. Next year is a one-year. Basically, New Year's Eve, God takes your Etch-A-Sketch and shapes it and clears it. And in a one year, you plant the seeds. So let me see. Can you Now, you've got another uh, contract coming up? I have one now. It started last week. It's for two, it's a, it's for two months whenever I get done with the project. They're really nice there, and it's decent they money. They do love How, you, and I think that they're going to try to find more work for you. You're going to be there, I believe, at least four months. Oh, what they, you need to do okay. for this year is uh-huh. truly decide what it is you want to put out in the world, what you want to do. Do you want to continue in the investments? Does your sentence of passion tell you to do something else? And really know what I'm looking for. I really do. I already know that. Okay. I really do. Then here is how I'm going to suggest you make it rock and roll. You you decide what your radius is for driving, you know, 10 miles, 30 miles, Mm -hmm. 50 miles. Uh, What's the nearest big city for you? Cleveland. Okay, I know zip about Ohio, so I'll trust you to figure out what that distance would be. But then find 10 places that you would like to work within that radius, and it doesn't oh my matter yeah, if I they promise have. You, I've done that already. I promise you, there's five companies I want to work for. They just right. haven't had the job openings come up. <laughs> Guess what? You're not going to wait for that. That's your key. Okay. Find those five companies. You do, you know, if there is a Cleveland Business Insider or whatever, you do some really studying on that. You find out where their strengths, their weaknesses are, and what is their current pet project. Then you are going to send your okay. CV and a cover letter, not to HR, because it just gets round filed. You send it to the guy you want to work for. Uh, dear Dr. McAllister, um, I've been noticing in the Cleveland Business Insider that International Widget is doing this, 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 and your plans for the next fiscal year are X. Um, as you can see from my CV, I do this, 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 and this is how I would be able to help you. My information is enclosed. I'm calling you next Tuesday to discuss <coughs> opportunities. Thank you so much. Now, two things. This shows you as proactive, not reactive, because the best jobs are never posted, ever. And if this doesn't, if they don't have anything for you but they like what they see, very often they pick up the phone. Hey, Brian. This is Ron. Look, I got this good-looking CV across my desk. I don't have a place for her, but you might. I'm faxing it over. Boom, let them do your work. But okay. that the key sense. is tell the universe what you want and make it happen. If you sit around waiting, it's like a casting call in Hollywood. You know, we need a 16-year-old blonde, and 6,000 people are waiting outside the door. But if somehow 
you get wind because you're at a deli that a casting agent is going to be looking for this 16-year-old blonde, and you're the blonde or the blonde's mom, then you know to send the CB and the headshot to them before it goes out, and you circumvent that whole process. Take it from the former actress in New York. It does work. Wow, I'm, you said you do recruiting. I heard, I heard, I, ever, I listened to everything you said. Um, do you I've really, had a very you, checkered career, darling. There's been a lot of stuff <laughs> I've done. You really, you really don't see me getting a permanent full time position this year. If you not get it, it, it's not going to last. Is what I'm saying okay. because okay. getting something permanent you. in a nine year is like trying to go up and down escalator. No matter how fast you run, you never quite get there. Okay. So, um, will you get something in the next year? Boom very quickly within the first month or two. And you can set that up this year. For instance, let's say you wanted to work for International Widget and you took a six-month contract with them. Can it turn permanent next year? Yes, it can. I got So find a contract to perm position if you can do it. Because that way they, they very much like the fact that they can test drive you, if you will, before they hire you. Okay. So you can do okay. this. But you got to believe in yourself, and when you walk in, say, you're so lucky I'm here. Not literally, but that's your attitude. And remember, interview the interviewer. How come this job is open? Is it an opening, or is it newly created? What was missing in the last guy that you really need this time? Don't be afraid to ask those questions. Okay. Have fun with it. All right. Oh boy, a year. Okay, but at least you don't see me. Uh, you don't see me job laps in me, though, do you? I will work. <laughs> yes, you will work. Okay. Yes, you will work. Know. I want you to notice something. You are focusing on the negative. Oh my Fear. God, she's not telling me I'm getting a permanent <laughs> job. Oh my God, am I going to work? I you're, know. All of the no. yummy advice I'm giving you, you're going, yeah, but. <laughs> and it I hear that. Doesn't too. hurt my feelings, but I'm telling you, the universe hears you, yeah, butting, and they will Thank say, I yeah, know. we had to tell you that. Thank you. I like your honesty. Thank you. You're right. Change. Get out Honey, of that. I'm 60. Right now. You think right. I learned a little something, you know? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome, my dear. Go get Thank have you. Both Thank of you. you have a nice Easter, okay? Yes. Thanks. You Thank too. you for calling. And remember, oh, focus thanks. Focus on the positive. Like I Corbin know, and said. I'm in a nine-year. Wonderful. I believe. Yes. Have a good night. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night. Enjoy, enjoy your oh. Easter. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. Now, Corby, I know what I've I've been. I have a question. Um, yes, can you t- can you tell us more about the work that you did with Robert? Because you, like you mentioned in the beginning, you worked on both of his books. Uh, I did. Your, your soul's plan and your soul's gift. Can you okay. uh, tell us a little bit more about the work that you did with Robert? Sure. Um. I was one of the very first people that Robert contacted that he clicked with, okay? Mm -hmm. Remember how he said that he was looking for people that could channel, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, he put me through my paces. He had a reading with me. And he found that Mm -hmm. what my skills were, um, I'm, (laughs) ego aside, I am really good at past lives because I can get detail and nuance and I have a historical context and the whole nine yards. And what we also discovered is that I actually can channel people's higher selves, their souls. Now, everybody mm-hmm. who's listening, um, I, you have an illustration here, a radio illustration. It's not easy. But I, every, everybody, I want you to look at your hand, palm up, fingers out, okay? Now, the palm that you're looking at, that's your soul. That's how big our soul is. Your fingers, they're like different incarnations. Your soul is way too big to fit in these little bitty incarnations. So a part of you comes down, has an experience, and then goes back up. What's the wrist and up the arm? That's your connection to God. So I am able to, if the soul so chooses, channel your higher self, your entire soul, for you to talk to. How? I have no idea. All of a sudden, God said, excuse me, this is part of your job description. And I went, sir, yes, sir. Um, I was also the one who introduced Rob to Stacy Wells, who is superb at actually hearing the pre-birth planning dialogue and really seeing the life challenges and the pre-birth planning sessions. And she and I are the two that he used in both books. The only thing that makes me different about all of this 
is my own story is actually in the first book. If you go to the physical illness chapter, you'll see John with AIDS and Doris with cancer. And I'm actually Doris. They changed the name because they didn't want people getting Corby the medium mixed up with Corby the subject. Okay. But that mm-hmm. tells my story, the difficult childhood, the cancer, all of my bad life choices, and how I made them work for me. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. Um, Rob is very dedicated to this work. It has basically consumed him. I'm glad he pulled his head out of the work long enough to meet his wonderful fiance. Um, but this can teach people, you can't get it wrong, guys, you just can't. Um, so I had this checkered career and this, this rough life, and I made a lot of bad choices. Does that mean I failed? No. Here's your example. Let's say you want to graduate from Ohio State University with a history degree. You're going to do that. If you take a lot of gut courses that, you know, you could sleep through and you get an A, you're still going to graduate. If you decide to take a double major plus laboratories, it's a lot more work, but you're still going to graduate. Me, I went for double major plus lab. I could have had it much easier, but I kept making the wrong choices. Does it mean I failed? No. It means that I just learned a lot more with a lot more difficulty. But now on the other side of a lot of that learning, I'm teaching with it. So even the tough stuff I've turned around, lived the exam of life, how can I make this work for other people? It's one of the reasons that, you know, Corby Mitlide is not my legal name. I keep that private. But Corby was chosen because Ray, it's, uh, Celtic for Raven, and Ravens are the messengers on the spirit roads. Uh, mm-hmm. Raven is also like Coyote the trickster for Northwest Native tribes. Um, very much a, a totem that, that loves humanity. Mitleid is the German word for compassion, and I chose it so that I would always remember why I'm doing this work. It's not to make the money, though I'm glad this is my full-time career. It's not for the ego, and it's not for the fame. It is because I'm here in service. And as long as I remember that, things go fine for me. Right. I understand, because exactly what I'm doing now with the show, with the Kyle Foundation, I'm starting in my son's honor, is exactly why I'm doing it. It's the mission, it's the passion, it's the a love. It's not about money, a fame, or any of that. It's about really sharing what helped me, which started, you know, actually started in 2007. But um, but what really helped me this past year was Rob's books and your your help. And um, so I just want to share that. You know, if I was helped, I want to be able to share that with someone else that can be helped. So that's just my passion and my mission. We do have another caller. Um, let me Bring it uh, on, baby. Okay. All right. Hi. You're live. Um, not seeing a number. Hello? Hi. Is that, hi. Is that me? Hi. Yes, yes that's you. you. Wow. <laughs> I didn't yes. think I'd get in. Excuse me? I didn't think I would get in. Thank you. Yes, you you got in. You are in in your name. My name is Gidget. Gidget. Okay. So, Gidget, what can yes, we do Gidget. for you? I'm just wondering um, what you see for a relationship or anything blocking me from that. Okay. So um, when I read at shows and expos, there's the where the heck is he question. And I think <laughs> that's what you're asking me. Is that true? Pretty much. Okay. Um, when I do that, there I do what I call the four and four. There are four things that you need to bring to the table in the next relationship in order to make it work. And then there are the four things that he has to bring in, or my darling, it is a non-starter, please do not waste your time. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. So what do you need to bring to the table? Here's what Spirit's telling me. Number one, a sense of safety. Um, I think that like a lot of us, you tended toward the edgy guys, the, maybe the bad biker boys guys in the past. Um, for you to really lower your shield and get into this relationship, you have to understand that your safety is in your own hands. 
Okay? Uh, totally. Um, okay, yes. Okay. The next is uh, revealing. You've got to show people who you are. You know, one of the things I talk about in my lecture, Happiness is a Choice, is personal authenticity. Too many women try and change themselves to the way the guy wants to be. And you know what? He still doesn't like you because he doesn't know who you are. So you have to be absolutely straight. This is who I am. Take it or leave it. That's um, funny. You have to express been... yourself. You have to talk. A lot of us are trained just let the guy talk. You know, he feels good. No, you got to tell him what you're thinking and how you're feeling. Don't make him guess. And the other thing is you have to be a clear witness. Very often we see somebody and we want them to be a certain way so much that we may have blind spots and keep making excuses when God keeps tapping us on the shoulder and saying, excuse me, um, would you look, please? You're not looking. Try looking. Hello. So you've got to see straight, warts and all, who he is and decide, can I love him, warts and all. Now, this is what this guy needs to bring on board. He has to be sensitive to you. Okay, I think you've had some, I will gently call them Neanderthals in the past, who when you were feeling upset or angry or confused, they just went steamrolling right over that. This guy has to be able to look at you and say, what's up? Um, he has to, you have to be in a complete relationship with him. It's not you're his off-night backstreet. It's not that he bounces between you and somebody else. It's, no, this woman completes me. This is the relationship I'm waiting for. He has to give you full spectrum. That means you get to see him happy, sad, depressed, angry, confused. Because when you do that, then you see everything that you're likely to run into as you run down the pike. And he has to be in the present moment. He can't be thinking about how he screwed up something else or what might happen in the future. The present moment is where our strength and possibility lies. And if we're not in the present moment, we are not living. Do you understand those four and four things I just told you about? Yes, but I'll probably have to um, download this so I can hear it again, so I can that's, hear it over and over. You know, um, Gidget, that's one of the reasons when I do my readings for people, they always get a CD recording if they're with me at a show or an MP3 download that I send them after a phone reading because you'll never remember everything, and if you're taking notes, you're not listening. You're absolutely right. Now, Tell me how old you are, and I want to see if I can get a feel for when the next possibilities are coming along. I'm 50. Okay. We're, um, I'm using a tarot deck, and I'm going to be looking for kings. They're 40 and over because, excuse me, under 40, they haven't grown any brains yet. Fair enough? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Okay. Hang on, my girl. Let me see what I'm seeing and where. April, May, June, July, August. Okay, this year I think you're going to be dating, but I don't see anybody that absolutely knocks your socks off until next May. No, oh. that's okay. You know, dating is good. But right. the guy I'm seeing next May, and then there's another one in October. So we're talking 2016. Uh, the okay. King of Cups is someone that is divorced or widowed, probably has adult children, but instead of being ripped apart by the divorce or the widow, widowerhood, it got him more in touch with his feelings. He's You know how guys never talk? He talks. So I like him a lot. The guy I see for you the following October, it's the King of Wands, and this is passionate and intelligent and exciting and probably an entrepreneur. But, my dear, you had better love his business as much as he does because that's like his mistress. For instance, if you're a vegetarian and he runs a butcher shop, it is not going to work. <laughs> got me? Yeah. So this year, make sure that you fall in love with yourself so you believe other people when they say, I love you. And next year, get ready for some possibilities. Now, I want you to notice I didn't say, oh, there is this one person in the world, because there isn't just one person for all of us. We have soulmates. Maybe we have a twin flame. But if there was only one person in the world for us, nobody would get divorced. Okay? Right. right. So remember, okay. your choice, my dear, but I'm seeing some pretty good options for you next year. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much. Okay. It was my pleasure. Hey. Did you, hi. I'd like to just chime in a little bit there. Okay, I'm I'm not an intuitive, but I, I, I resonate so much with Cor what Corby is saying. I am single, have been for a while, and I'm extremely happy. Um, because I 
I love me, and whoever I do meet, um, I, I'm, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be authentic. Be your authentic self and love yourself. And it will. It, it, it'll happen exactly when it's supposed to happen. That right person will, will see you for who you are because you're living your authentic life. And you're not settling. You know, you're, you're, you're being you and you're loving you and you're loving life. So do the things you love to do. That's another great way of meeting people that enjoy the same things you enjoy. That's kind of what I'm doing. But I'm happier than I've ever been in my life, and I'm totally single, and there's not, not a guy in sight. <laughs> so right. I just wanted to, to, to throw that in there. Great. Thank you so much. It's great advice. And um, I'm working on myself and trying to have fun and relax and not worry about things. So, you know, I'm a work in progress and right. I'm excited we, that I could talk to we you all guys. Are. You, know what my to definition, you know what my definition for worry is? Hmm. Praying for what you don't want. That is my definition for worry. Yeah. Praying for what you don't want. Because whatever you give your intentions to, if that's what you're asking the universe to give you. So you right. don't want to worry. You don't want to. You don't want to tell, give any negative signals to the universe, because that's right. what the universe is going to throw back at you. Okay. Yep. All right. You Thank have you, so you have a wonderful Easter. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thanks for calling. Bye. Um. Good stuff, Corby. You there? I didn't lose you, did I? <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I'm, I'm right here. I'm just I'm politely quiet when somebody else is talking. Um, oh. You know, I will jokingly say I'm never the I'll never say I'm the best psychic in a room because that's pride. But there's nobody as fast as I am, and that's because oh, okay. of how much I do. I mean, I'm on the road 45 weekends a year doing this. I read about 1,200 people a year, and it's like any other muscle. You use it a lot, mm-hmm. it gets very strong and very supple. Mm-hmm. And I That's really enjoy true. being able to empower people, to put a rocket pack on their back and say, go live your life. Generally, yeah. after they leave with me, after they have a session with me, they leave, they're happy, they're excited, they see what they can do, even in a tough situation. That means I'm doing my work right. That's true. Very true. Uh, we do have another caller from the 570 area code. That's my area code. Somebody yeah, local. Hi, 570 area code. You are on the line. Yes, hi. This is Susie. Hi, Miss Caroline. Uh, hi, hi, Susie. I kind of thought that was you. <laughs> this yeah. is, Corby, I this a is a, a dear friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there, Susie. How are you? I'm loving the show. As I, I was driving while I was listening to it listening to it, and I'm loving it. I stopped now because I wanted to call in, and um, I'm very curious about everything that's being said there. Um, I forgot the lady's name. I apologize. Uh, but she says she can reach your higher soul, and I wonder, I'm wondering if she has a, uh, if she has a message for me and, and my artwork. Okay. Um, I may not be able to get your, your soul, your higher self, because as I explained before, for me, that's deep trance work, baby, and the voice changes, and it would be dead air, which is the last thing a radio person wants. But what I'm getting about your artwork is um, uh, you haven't told me what you do. You don't tell me what your subject is or what your medium is. But what I'm um, seeing is almost a feel like Mark Chagall. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do. I love Mark Chagall. Okay. For for those who, who are not art people, um Mark Chagall is, I believe, a 20th century painter, um, a little bit abstract, a little bit Picasso-like in that it isn't absolute straight representation. There's a real mystical uh, uh, feel to it. And what I'm seeing is that's what you need to do, and it doesn't matter whether you are a sculptor, whether you are a painter, whether you uh, do fabric arts. Um, you're going to start downloading things to do. Um, when you do your artwork, do you just sit down and do it, or do you ground and center first? I I ground. I I stay centered. I try to get calm and find the moment. Uh, um, as long as I know 
um, that I have a little bit of peace and music uh, to calm me down um, and be in that moment where I can just release what's to come, then it just comes easily. Perfect. Perfect. I would like to see you carve out time for that at least once a week. I don't know whether you do this full-time or only part-time, but if you can train your mind and your schedule that Saturday nights from 7 to 9, it's download time, you are going to become so prolific, it is going to blow you away. Yes, ma'am. Thank um, you. Now, artwork, artwork is singing with our hands and with paint and with marble. So you have a lot of songs to sing, my darling. Get them out there. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You are welcome. And I, Corby, I have to tell you, she is an awesome artist. I went to a show of hers about a month ago, and she has beautiful paintings. Uh, and the way you described her, her artwork is exactly her artwork, the way she, she uh, uh, paints. And she's a, a really very, very good artist. And Susie knows, I see Susie weekly, <laughs> and Susie knows I tell her all the time, focus on the positive. <laughs> right, Susie? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I yes, am. ma'am. <laughs> Thank You're you making me feel it. old with the yes, ma'am. Oh, sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm, my I'm yes, joking. ma'am knows for everybody, because my mother was from Norfolk, <laughs> Virginia, and we got taught manners. Okay. That doesn't mean you're yes. old. It just means whoever exactly. right. you have manners. Yes, exactly. Yes. Let me say yes, ma'am. Oh, I was going to work on that. That's for sure. <laughs> well, thank okay. you, ladies, and uh, you have a good evening. Thank take you, care. Susie, for calling in. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Okay, bye bye. You're welcome. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes, she's she's really good. She's a very very good um, artist. Um, wow. Can't can't believe the uh, great callers we have this uh, evening. Um, My grandson is here, and he knows not to disturb me, but of course he is. He's five. He's going to turn five. (laughs) He's like, okay, an hour is too long to sit and watch television. But, uh, yes. So, um, tell your friends a little bit on how they can find me. Um, okay, yes, please I would do, love to keep in touch with your audience. Um, yes. The best place to find me is my website, which is Fire Through Spirit, and that's spelled like in third grade, T-H-R-O-U-G-H, firethroughspirit.com. It's got articles, it's got links, it's got all kinds of stuff. And I want to have your people, if you go onto the first page, and you look in the right-hand sidebar, you'll see at the top, subscribe to Corby's newsletter. That's for flight patterns. When you subscribe, then you will get my ebook, which is called Psychic Answers, and you will also see that you get a couple of coupons, one of which is for your first reading with me. Uh, it's like 25% off. And the next one is if you want to do something like a soul plan reading with me, just like I did in the book, there's also a coupon for that. Um, I travel quite a bit. If you are anywhere basically from Maine to South Carolina and out toward Pittsburgh, that's how you're going to find out if I am in your area. Because as I say, I love doing the psychic fairs and the expos, and I travel quite a bit. In fact, I was down in your neck of the woods um, twice in March, uh, both times in Reading, Pennsylvania. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And you're going to be in New Jersey in a couple of weeks, correct? That's right. I'm going to be at the Mind Body Spirit Expo in Somerset, New Jersey. And, okay. Um, and I will be there. That, <laughs> if anybody is anywhere near Plainsboro, I am going to be doing a weekend of workshops at the Center for Relaxation and Healing. Um, Friday night is How to Prep for a Great Psychic ex- Experience. Saturday, April 18th, I'll be doing one workshop on the violet flame and one on the weaving of your lives, which is about the work I did with Rob. There's also a guided meditation and a past life gallery. You've seen mediums just say, okay, I'm getting this message from uh, from spirit for you. Um, I basically do an instant download on past lives. People really love that. And then Sunday the 19th, I'll be doing private readings for people there as well. Okay, and now where is that going to be in Jersey? 
That's in Plainsboro, New Jersey. That's, okay. Uh, about 15 minutes near Princeton. Most people know where okay. Princeton is. Yes, yes. My my nephew is a freshman at Princeton. I have to shout out Amir Bell. He's there also a basketball star. Has to give him okay. a shout out. Yes. <laughs> he is doing awesome there. Oh, wow. I also, I'd like to let the audience also know um, I, about my foundation for my son, it, which Absolutely. is called the Kyle Foundation, which actually the Kyle stands for Keep Your Light Expanding, and Corby gave me that at an expo about six months ago, uh, September. Um, I ran into Corby, and she gave me a reading, and she told she told me she knew I was going to do this foundation, and she gave me that um, that lo- that motto: "Keep your light expanding." Using Kyle's name, and I have to give credit where credit is due. And I I believe you were channeling that from Kyle's spirit. Yeah, that because, was from Kyle, darling. That wasn't me. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. That, I that. I, be- I believe that. I believe that because you didn't even remember when I reminded you. You're like, uh, huh, I did. So yeah, that was that was Kyle letting me know. And I believe that Kyle also before his birth told me to name him Kyle in a dream. I could not think of a name for Kyle, and he knew the soul our soul plan together. Um, mm-hmm. And he told me what to name him before he was born. So that is where that is all coming from, the Kyle Foundation. Keep your light expanding, which I think is awesome, awesome. Um, Wow, I can't believe how fast an hour goes sometimes, but this this has been a wonderful experience. And I really, really... um, I'm so happy that uh, Rob, you, Barbara, and every like so many people from the book, <laughs> uh, Your Soul's Plan, have come to help me launch Awake to Oneness Radio, which uh, I really it, it's a it's a passion for me. It's from the heart, and I'm just hoping that I could just even if I can inspire one or uh, help one person a week. Um, that's just my 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 heart, on my heart. What my heart wants me to do, and I'm yeah, just following heart. It. Trust me, the work is gorgeous that you're doing. Thank you, thank you. I am so so uh, thankful. I really am. I'm just so thankful. So, um, Corby, did you want to share anything um, else with us as far as what's coming up for you this year? Because I know. Uh, uh, you are a very busy lady, and didn't you? You just had a birthday, didn't I? I did didn't the you? big six zero. Yeah, happy I birthday! Know. Thank you. Yes. thank you. Um, Sixty is like uh, a painted silk scarf. Twenty is in, in, in denim. The idea being, in your twenties, you're very rough and tumble, and not much breaks you. When you're sixty, okay. you're a little bit more delicate about your life. Uh, you're not quite as hardy as you were at twenty. But you sure know who you are, and like a painted scarf, you have created the beauty in your life, and it looks like nobody else's, just yours. Don't be afraid of getting older. Olding, oh, definitely olding, not. As opposed to aging, can be an awful lot of fun. Yes, definitely not. Now, I I own a jet ski, and I intend to be riding that jet ski when I'm 85. <laughs> no, girl. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you again. Thank you so much, Corby. I appreciate so much. And I will see you in Somerset. Is it Somerset, New Jersey? At the yes, Expo? ma'am, it is. And I, I will very I, much look forward to seeing you. Yes, I will be there. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful Easter. And thank you. Enjoy, thank you. enjoy the weekend. Love to everybody. And we will be back next Friday, 7 p.m. Uh, Everybody have a wonderful Easter. God bless. Bye-bye.